Hey, what's going on, guys? It's Trevor Plays here, back again with some more One Piece. We are here with Chapter One Thousand Seventy Eight, Escape Limit. Um, so yeah, pretty cool, pretty cool chapter. Um, that I have kind of been somewhat spoiled on. Um, sadly, I was really trying hard not to. Um, but you know what? What? What can you do? Um, so. Yeah, we have still Germa 66 on Emotionless Excursion, Volume 33, The Formation of Neo Mads. And we have Caesar and Judge. Um, having a, uh, a celebration. Um, cool. Cool. So a re-team up. Awesome. Good to know. All right, here we go. Laboratory future. Oh, laboratory. Future island egghead. <clears throat> Old man keys are open. Second floor, building B. That's right. CP Zero's mission is to eliminate Dr. Vegapunk and wait for Kizaru to arrive. The government sounds hellbent on this plan. Indeed, they must see this as an even uh, graver set of circumstances than Ohara. So we have Stussy and Jinbei together, which is good, which is good, okay. And she's talking on a transponder snail to Sintamaru. For one, Dr. Vegapunk has picked up and continued the forbidden research that doomed Ohara. And two, Egghead has military power that Ohara did not. Enough reason for them to send an unexpected amount of force. Just call me directly if something happens. The Lavo Phase communication systems are all down. Fabro Phase. You heard all that. You want to know what the uh, Navy's going to do here? Look at history. You don't have time to sit on your hands, people. Everyone onto the ships. We've got to evacuate the island before the Navy gets here. Everybody go, uh, do what Sintamaru says. Third floor. Building C. Laboratory. Usopp! Lilith! Oh, you snotty little brat! Undo this petrification right now! I may have gotten sloppy and lost my right side, but I still got my left. If you surrender now, I'll go easy on you. And then... Oh, uh, um... Why have you done this, a snake? Who ordered you to? She goes over, steps on him, crunch. Pythagoras! <laughs> Big explosion. And Frankie. No, wait! Hey! Stop! Second floor, building A. I hope everyone's alright. I keep hearing explosions and screams. We know for sure that the Seraphim are fighting. I just don't get why. Well, if Nami screams, we know there's someone who will be there in a heartbeat. Uh, any team currently fighting will be locked in combat. So while everyone is busy battling it out, something could be happening to Vegapunk in the meantime. That's a good point. That reminds me. There's one lab that we used in the past, but that's been locked up for a while. I don't know why uh, he might want to visit such a place, but let's go take a look then. Lead the way, Atlas. You got it. Third floor, building A. Hang in there, Edison. Tell you what. I'll go search for Vegapunk. Huh? Ah! Sanji! And then, uh, S-Shark. 
punches Sanji in the face. He's like, huh? And then we see Sanji's eyebrow swirls the other way. What would you know about the power of love? <laughs> okay. Um, so yes, we, we do see that it, it does seem that when Sanji is using um, the the um, exoskeleton or whatever, like his new little upgrade here, his eyebrow swirl goes the other direction, so that way it's the same uh, way as his siblings. Um, so we do see that Sanji does have a little bit of, like, he's losing himself, but then at the same time, he's still himself. So it, it's this constant battle between becoming like his siblings and being himself. So I still love that aspect um, for Sanji as well. Again, being as my favorite character. So, yeah. Uh, fourth floor, building A. <sighs> Damn it. They just won't disappear. Those flames on their backs are stubborn. See Zoro and Luffy? The flames won't disappear, but Hawkeye sure did. Where'd he go? He's changed his assassination priority. He'll leave the trouble... Troublesome targets for later. And start with the weakest instead. And if they happen to be comrades, it will, will have the benefit of rattling the stronger targets. Don't worry, I'll go after him. Zoro! You have to go. You have to go with him, Usopp. Gotta go with him, Usopp. He's gonna get lost right away. What am I, an errand boy? Wait for me, Roanora. Gum gum. Wait, what did you call me? <laughs> Hawk Gatling. Go out already, stupid fire. Use your head, Straw Hat. You, you're never going to beat him fighting that way. This has been a record of the events before the, the day. Of the famous egghead incident. But its course was set in motion three months prior. You still see Bonnie right there. And then three months ago, Sacred Mary Jo. I'm going to say Marie Joa. I know that it's probably not. Everyone says Mary Joa or Mary Joyce or whatever they want to call it or whatever. I'm still calling it. Marijua, just because that's what I'm used to calling it. So that's what it is. So three months ago on the sacred Marijua. I'm calling from Egghead. I want to speak to one uh, uh to the ones in charge. Dr. Vegapunk is studying the void sensory. CP5 was dispatched to ascertain the truth, but found no evidence. Their ship mysteriously vanished after leaving Egg Egghead. Subsequent, uh, subsequent agents were uh, sent from CP7, then 8. Uh, but none of them returned to the government. This is Egghead. I want to speak to the ones in charge. After a decision between the five elders and an unknown figure, the genius scientist's betrayal had been made clear. The elders made the call to have Dr. Vegapunk assassinated. Cypherpole Ages Zero undertook the mission, but anticipating a counterattack by Vegapunk, the elders chose to make a visit in person with Admiral Kizaru as protection. Reinforcements uh, were requested from naval bases far and wide. The deployment made it clear that they were expecting war. Okay, we're getting a glimpse of some of these leaders. One of them, I see Doll. I see Doll in there. So, okay. And into that situation failed, sailed. The ship of the... Oh, hold on. Point made it clear they were expecting war. And into that situation sailed. The ship of the Straw Hat of Straw Hat Luffy, Emperor of the Sea. The arrival of this unexpected variable unsettled the government, to say the least. What? 
straw hat. <sighs> Not again. But regardless, the result, uh, resolution of this incident the following day would inflict a kind of shock the world never saw coming. Hey, was this all you're doing? Answer me. Why would you do this? Hey, Stella. You know what? I'm gonna be a celestial dragon. What nonsense is this, York? You went to Marie Joie years ago, and you really want to be one of those ghastly, horrid people? Just what Shaka would say if he weren't dead already. It's so complicated when everyone is Vegapunk. The world only needs one Dr. Vegapunk. To be continued. So, yeah. What I got spoiled on was this last panel here with York being the one to kill Shaka. Um, I always kind of had a... Um, like a suspicion that it might be York. Um, like when all of these characters, when all of these uh, satellites were introduced, um, because of how Oda was portraying York um, as pretty much like the most human out of all of them, um, but also being very lazy. That always tends to be a trope with some characters that, they may seem very, very lazy and not want to do anything or whatever, but eventually, no, they do something like this. Um, so, yeah, I mean, I, I, I kind of expected it. I knew it was going to be one of the Stellas, at least, or not the Stellas, one of the satellites, at least. I knew it was going to be one of them. Um, uh, but yeah, for it to be York, it kind of makes sense. Because um, Atlas, I like Atlas uh, just because of like how she's introduced. And she's with Robin and Chopper. So it's oddly, it's a weird, odd pairing. But also, you can kind of figure that Atlas is not going to do anything to these two. Uh, Edison is with Nami and Brooke. And now Sanji. Um, and yeah, he's just like, he seems the calculative one where like he could be scheming things in the background. So that was also another possibility as well. Um, and then Pythagoras, I never really thought, um, never really got the, you know, vibe from him. Same thing with Lilith. Like, sure, she is the evil one, but you know. For fan service reasons and you know continuity and everything she's not going anywhere um so there's that um and then the other one possibly being stussy or stussy but she's with jinbei and luckily that has been debunked within the first minutes of this chapter where we see her talking to Sentamaru with Jinbei next to her. So we're, we're safe to assume that we're fine. For the meantime, Stussy's on our side. So, bef <laughs> you know, at some point she may or may not betray us at some point. Because that's also possible. But for right now, she's on our side. So that's cool. Um, and, yeah. I do like... Um, robin's uh, explanation to to atlas is like well if nami screams we know there's somebody who's always going to be around so yeah it it makes sense that obviously robin would now know would know that sanji is going to show up at any point um i mean it's 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 textbook by now so um yeah, and we still see Bonnie is crying at the little paw pad bubble um, thing. So she is still in here um, learning about what's going on. Um, 
and then yeah getting the confirmation about the cp uh, agents so the ones from five seven and eight so the ones we saw previously that are locked up in this area where vegapunk is um and then to see like oh yeah the world government was expecting a counterattack. so let's send one of our five elders as well as kizaru and some more of the admirals um the only one I know is Doll, and that was just because she got introduced recently. And I can tell it's Doll because of the tattoos on her arm that you can slightly see. Um, so, yeah. So this is crazy. Um, yeah. But it has now been confirmed. Shaka is now dead. And Pythagoras is dead as well. So, that is crazy. So, we still have Atlas and Edison and York. And Lilith. We still have, okay, yeah. I, I completely forgot about Lilith right here, even though I know she's right here in this scene. Um, so, yeah, Lilith. Um, so Lilith, York, Edison, and Atlas are the last remaining ones. So they really just killed off two of them. Um, yeah. Um, but yeah, for it to be York, it's it was kind of expected. I'm not going to lie. It was kind of expected. I kind of really expected this at some point. Like I was like, okay, it's going to be one of the satellites it has to be um but yeah for it to be york is you know kind of a shock in a way but then again not really so yeah um but it is what it is and sure we saw york get petrified by um you know the the boa seraphim like right before their eyes like um and all that but then she went and petrified everybody else and half petrified frankie so you know which i think makes sense that half of frankie is petrified because that also shows that which side of him is kind of mostly human um like i i mean like i know that frankie's modified himself a lot of time like a lot but, you know, it kind of shows that, like, kind of more on, like, which, you know, I'm, I might be reading into this a little bit too, too much, but it is what it is. But, yeah, hopefully you guys enjoyed this live reaction. If you did, hit, please hit that thumbs up button. Leave some comments down below on what you guys thought of the chapter. Were you expecting York to be the traitor? Um, and... Yeah, are you guys excited for this upcoming battle between Kizaru and um, and the and these uh, admirals and the one of the five elders? Like that's that's gonna be crazy because uh, we know it's gonna happen. Um, like it's gonna happen, regardless, it's gonna happen. So. But yeah, hope you guys enjoyed, and I will see you guys.